Thank you, Alejandro, uh, for being here, for taking the time together with me to talk us a bit more through the technical details of our expansion of power to Solana mainnet. Uh, tell me a little bit about yourself. Yeah, um, well, uh, I come from South America. I was born in Venezuela and I lived in Mexico for 15 years. I'm both Venezuelan and Mexican. I decided to move to Australia six years ago and have been working for Power Ledger the last five years. So it has been very exciting to work for this company and the things that we're, that we're doing. Yeah. Is it is it is it the use cases that excites you? Is it the the constant kind of adaptability of the technology stack? Uh, Power Ledger has obviously grown um, from various kind of uh, Bitcoin forks very early on with yeah. initial experimentation. Later, the first ICO in Australia. Um, on, on Ethereum um, to moving to your own fork or our own fork of uh, Solana uh, as the Power Ledger blockchain. What has been the experience in this transition and how have you, have you found uh, running your fork of Solana? Yeah, uh, to answer your first question, what excites me about this space? Uh, I've been in the blockchain space since quite a while. So I think it's very important to have a new ecosystem that transitions the current financial system into something more efficient in terms of, in terms of cost and in, in terms of infrastructure, use of infrastructure. So I think that's uh, vital for the world to have something like that. Yeah. Uh, to answer your second question uh, regarding the, the Solana fork that we're running. Uh, yeah, it uh, has been a really interesting process, very challenging process because running a Solana fork, re it re requires like really uh, deep technical skills. It's a, it's a complex software. So we began running uh, version 1.6 of Solana, and then we have upgraded that, that cluster from version 1.6 to version 1.13, which is the version that we're running currently. And um, yeah, but it has, that challenge has also been very, um, I have learned a lot of things in the process, which has been very, has been very exciting. What about the, the technology itself? Solana, um, what, what is the, the benefits of running a Solana-based protocol? Yeah, I mean, over, over the versions, Solana has evolved a lot. Uh, at the beginning, at the very beginning, and everybody knows, I mean, it had, it had some uh, situations in, uh, that, that led to some uh, forks that happened in the past. I mean, some hard forks, uh, the network was installed several times as the software evolved. And as it became more mature, then the network has stabilized in terms of quality of service, which has been great. So transition from a Ethereum um, permission network to a public Solana fork network. And the first thing that happened is like we increased in throughput like massively, which is, which is great for our use cases because our use cases in particular require a massive throughput. So that, that was first. Second was uh, we, we were able to do a more decentralized deployment. Yeah because we were running a small permission network and now we're running a public uh, um, de uh, decentralized network with uh, participation of several validators. We still run an important um, uh, proportion of the stake, but there are people participating actively. Yeah. And um, as we've heard earlier today from our CEO, Dr. Gemma Green, um, we're very excited that Power Ledger will be moving or basically expanding to the Solana mainnet. Uh, what excites you about this move? Yeah, that's very interesting because, I mean, Solana has grown a lot. Uh, many people are joining into the network uh, faster, more. Uh, PayPal is deploying a lot of uh, money on the, on the network, I mean, faster than they have done it on Ethereum. And, uh, I mean, Ethereum has its place. Ethereum has been a very important, uh, set a very important milestone in this, uh, in this space and for the world. But Solana is offering also something that was a bit of lacking on Ethereum, which is the kind of throughput and user experience that people require. So for us, it's very exciting because we can leverage on that high throughput, easy to use, uh, and uh, make use of all of the tools that are coming into Solana for our own products and services. Yeah. So I would, I would basically say that uh, running our own fork of Solana has really shown us how much the, the protocol Solana itself, the technology is capable of. And uh, there's a lot of exciting things happening in the space, such as token extensions, uh, Fire Dancer coming. So it obviously is something we've been very happy about, but uh, expanding to Solana mainnet allows us to focus more on the products 
and uh, really do what we're great at, which yeah, is building use cases uh, for the energy and sustainability space. Yeah, and that's one of the goals, actually, because uh, running an infrastructure like this requires a lot of effort and a lot of resources. So by focusing on, on, use, on, on our own use cases and by leveraging on Solana infrastructure that is already running, and it's running in a very smooth way now, mm -hmm. and it's gonna, inc it's gonna be better in the near future, that allows us to actually focus very deeply on the use cases and make our products better. Can you walk us through the roadmap uh, for Power Ledger to launch uh, on yeah. Solana mainnet? Yeah, sure. I mean, the, 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 um, the steps that I'm going to describe are not going to happen in this particular order, but it, there are basically two things. One is the deployment of the token, and the other one is the phasing out of the blockchain of the cluster. So the cluster, is gonna, I'm going to begin with the cluster. The cluster is going to phase out in, in a specific epoch that we're going to disclose. We don't have, we don't have the exact epoch, exact epoch yet. So what's going to happen, we're going to um, scale down the stake that we have, which is the majority now, and that's going to effectively stop the network and then phase out the, the actual virtual machines, the, the, well, the bare metal servers that we're using for that. And that's stopping the network, but we need to distribute the rewards that people have accrued, those who are participating as validators and those who are participating as delegators. Since we are distributing the rewards on the Ethereum side of things by using our staking contract, what we're going what to what we're gonna do is the snapshot that we take on that particular epoch, we're going to uh, uh, set the amount of reward, the corresponding rewards for each one of the delegators and validators on the Ethereum side of things, and so people will be able to withdraw directly from there at any time. Great. That, that totally makes sense about kind of scaling down our yeah, own. That's on the cluster one. side. Exactly. And uh, now on the token side. Perfect. Uh, the token side, we we need to do two things. One, we need to create a, a escrow contract on Ethereum so we can lock some power tokens on that side of things. And we're going to use SPL tokens plus extensions on Solana. Uh, we're we're going to activate some extensions, by the way. <coughs> um, we will disclose that information later. And once we uh, deposit tokens on this escrow contract on Ethereum, we're going to release the exact same amount on this SPL token on Solana. So the supply is going to remain the same. It's not going to change. That makes a lot of sense. And I, I think that's great to hear for anyone who holds power tokens. Yeah, definitely. Maybe also, you, you mentioned the escrow contract on the Ethereum side and, and obviously the new token mint on Solana. Will there be tokens available both on Ethereum and Solana? So will everything kind of continue being the way it used to be on the Ethereum side of things? Yeah, it will be exactly the same. And by, but by providing liquidity now on Solana with our power token, then we will enable the use cases that, we're, that have, we have been working on all these years now on Solana with our power token backed by us. What about the, the power ledger solutions, such as TraceX that is used for the trading of renewable energy certificates or Transactive um, for the peer-to-peer -peer trading of renewable energy? Uh, what happens with these solutions? Will they also move to Solana mainnet? Yeah, they will, uh, they will transition to Solana mainnet for sure. And everything that they do with the power token, we will transition as well. All right. So it's going to be a smooth migration from our own layer one to Yeah, it's 100% compatible. I mean, the technology, the technology doesn't change, so we don't have to do that much. Perfect. Well, great. Thank you very much. Well, thank you, Jacob. And uh, maybe to finish it off, what are you most excited about um, for this road ahead? Okay, uh, for the ecosystem in particular, I am personally very excited about the finance a client. I think it's a really, really important uh, milestone that uh, once deployed, it's, uh, it's going to do really positive things for the network. So increasing the throughput is very important. And uh, with the inevitable um, increase in network throughput globally in the, in the coming years, that's going to be very positive. Also positive for PowerLedger? Also positive for PowerLedger, of course. Well, that's all we want to hear. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you.